Reflecting on the memory, Twilight held the spoon with her magic, while her horn used the latter half of its strength to bring forth the lighter and whisk it to her direction. As she lit the spoon, all she had to do was wait, and her world would be free again. Her mind drifted off to one of the many arguments she had with Spike. Reciting the harsh yet true word, addict, in her head was both pleasing and depressing. She knew full well that getting out of the game was not going to happen, but the possibility of knowing it can happen sparked and recharged that fire through her brain briefly. Maybe one day, maybe one day, she said to herself. Five minutes passed, and now the heroine had finally liquefied enough for the event soon to partake in her veins. Exuberance and exhilaration certainly painted a canvas of Twilight Sparkle's new lifestyle. It was a force that no one could have predicted, even from the most disturbing parts of their minds, that Twilight Sparkle is a drug addict. She then divided her magic into thirds and used the syringe to lick up a large dose of the unmerciful uh, downer's drug. She, her widened eyes blood with passion as she watched her rush being sucked away to be disposed rightfully in her skin. Her lips were dead dry and her tongue was beyond begging. It was practically drooling out from the muzzle with no regret. She gazed at the syringe and puckered up when the process was finished. After fixing her posture, she dropped the spoon to the floor while the lighter bounced off her hind leg and landed beside her hoof. Twilight then retraced the tubing back from the floor, but in the heat of the dire moment, she scowled and whisked the tube off the ground and relayed the integral part back to her. Her heart pounded and sped up as if time was getting slower. She turned her head to the right and watched while the tubing wrapped around her rough, patchy purple coat. She struggled to find a vein with her eyes since she was a pony. It was a lot harder for ponies to do because they have fur all over their bodies that make it hard to find small things like veins. Nevertheless, it was a task that was sure to pay off within a minute or two. She dreaded her teeth and squinted her eyes to see any signs of potential bait. Looking further, there was a dead one, or at least, one that had dried up from the looks of it. Twilight investigated more, and soon, she was on the money. And now, she had a perfect candidate ready to be subjected to the well-known disease called dope. Twilight tightened the tube more, and now the vein was clearly showing through her coat. Her magic whisked the syringe off its coffee break and soon got into position to break Twilight's skin once more. She has, on occasion, tried smoking heroin through a pipe, but it deemed too awful for her lungs to contain that sulfuric gas. In the end, she had a conversation with a dealer, and he too deemed it a piss-poor experience for a youngster like her, and so he reduced it back to injecting through the veins. Twilight breathed extremely tight. Her whole body was stiff, uh, suffering another panic attack. Her chest tightened, the lungs exhaled and inhaled frantically, and her heart screamed more than ever. Twilight licked her lips and played this bump, prayed this bump would be enough to take her outside of her own box. The veins beneath her skin begged to not be subjected to the horrors of the syringe. Her body begged, and even her conscience pleaded. It wasn't enough, sadly. She drived into herself, and the syringe probed through the skin, blistering and puncturing the already withered body once more. It effortlessly sliced through the skin and reached the vein inside. The stinging wasn't all that bad once you slowly compressed the heroin out of your syringe and into your body. Doing exactly that, she moaned in bliss at her accomplishment. The rush wouldn't start for another 30 or so seconds, but when it hit though, it was going to make big waves throughout her body and unleash an epitome of euphoric high, tickling into her brain 
dopamine was scheduled, scheduling another lethally high, thanks to the massive dose she had taken. The blood vessels throbbed and pulsated. It demanded to hold off her addiction until her body had properly healed. But in the end, however, the hot fluid of heroin cruised through her bloodstream, soon proved an effortless opponent to fight. The downer's drug took full control of the wheel, and her mind was now infected with an immersive high. Twilight felt instantly sedated from the wonderful drug. Her mind was caught in the influx of reality and fiction, but the opiate made sure it did its part, and her body stuttered, legs trembled, and arms shivered like a slight cold breeze was gliding through the window. Her body relaxed, her anxiety uplifted, and she was now one with the heroine. The big waves of euphoria soon filled her whole body with warmth and safety. Twilight felt like she was swimming and ruffled through the clouds, like she was crowned queen of the world and had complete control over the sky. She felt like Celestia, or Cadence, couldn't touch this mare if they bestowed their most powerful magic against her. Overthrowing the powerful Alicorn was never her intention, unless she was completely drunk. But, while on heroin, she knew that anything seemed possible. Her tolerance built up, and had gained significantly throughout the last two months and getting more and more of the drug was becoming harder than ever. Celestia had begun asking questions why she required so many bits at one time. Twilight said she was just redecorating the library and required the necessary bits to fund the project, but Celestia wasn't dumb. She can hear the obvious scam through her students' teeth, and she didn't understand why the lying was becoming Twilight's new gig. It didn't help that her hygiene began to degrade and she smelled and looked more grotesque than a hobo on the curb of Canterlot's underworld. She asked her friends if they would spare her any bits on the many plans she had made recently. She gave in while others wondered. Some asked, and the rest kept quiet. Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy were the ones to frequently ask what was up. It was ironic, in a way, for Fluttershy, since she herself was planting, harvesting, and selling weed publicly. Well, I guess the garden in her yard was there for another purpose. Her friends didn't ha mind, and some even bought off her on occasion, but every pony knew heroin was out of their league. No one ever suspected Twilight Sparkle to turn into a junkie bent on smack and oppression. They all assumed that would have been some pony like Rarity, who would turn into an addict with her stressful lifestyle. The tubing soon came off and the syringe was now on the ground. She tried her best to keep her eyes focused as the eyelids moved up and down, fading in and out. She had to act on putting her equipment back before she either became too induced with the drug intoxication or passed out from the effects. It didn't take too long to put everything back though. She packed the four remaining bags with the lighter before throwing the spoons in and stuffing the syringe together. She more uh, then topped it off with another assorted pieces, and finally zipped up the casing before the day soon faded into an amazing haze of unclarity. Just then, her body had been accustomed to flying in the air, even though she didn't possess wings. However, Twilight still felt like making an effort to try. She raised her forehooves and imagined herself as Wondermare, and blasted through the sky. In her case, she only rose about two feet off the toilet seat before landing on her hip on the floor. She didn't feel the pain, though. The feeling of pain, or any sort of discomfort, had waned away during the initial rush of her high. Twilight's face blushed against her muzzle in accomplishment. Pleased with her mission, she rolled on her back and stared at the lights above her. She wondered if this magnificent bulb goes through the rush like she was going through on a daily basis, whether it was turned on. She wondered if the bulb ever got aroused when her, or Spike, repeatedly flickered its switch on and off. Twilight wondered if it ever got depressed when its ray of sunshine was forever put asleep by the evil switch. She then looked at the switch and began cursing at its evil magic 
for choosing between happiness and sadness for the light bulb. Twilight even cursed the ceiling, and cursed Celestia and Luna, cursed Spike, and cursed herself. She often contemplated professional help from Applejack, seeing as how she could be the mayor that could keep her calm when Twilight got overworked. Spike aggressively scraped the door with his claws and gritted his teeth while stammering for Twilight's attention. Twilight, are you doing okay? Twilight didn't feel a damn thing at this point. A good thing she locked the door. Otherwise, shit would have gotten bad. I, 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 you should go away. I'm resting for something. Something? You're fucking high again, that's what. You know how I know? Because you've been sneaking off to the bathroom for the past week. That's how. Spike. She started off. You must let your sister rest. She doesn't need you anymore for the night. Go find Pinkie Pie or something. Twyla was nodding hard. Her speech was slowly getting more slurred and incoherent as the moments were passing by. The heroine inside her was trickling the time for his reprisal to take effect. Twilight, you can't do this anymore. I hate seeing you turn into this monster you're becoming, and some pony has to know. I mean, fuck. You're not even bashing me for swearing. It's totally off the grid for you, because you're fucking addicted to a substance that's murdering your body and your self-morals. Do you even have a proper bath this week? No, Spike. It doesn't concern you. I'll take my bath next time. Did you even hear me? You need some help. And I can't tell our friends that you're sick. Away to Canterlot, visiting family, or doing lots of studying. You haven't even touched your recent set of books Celestia gave you a month ago. And slacking is never your most prized enjoyment. Slacking or not, my fun is time to shine. So buzz off and let me sleep. It's not fair, Twilight. Watching you kill yourself is something I can't stand for any longer. I will have to bring Celestia in on this. You better not do that. What's happened to you? You were a mare with pride. You were a student with compassion. You have friends that can help you and are always there for you. But you sit here in this stupid bathroom, nodding off on things that you keep calling fun. What's so fun about seeing my sister fall into a, over the ground and barely awake to realize that she's pissing or shitting all over the floor? Do you fancy a bump? Excuse me? A bump. A hit. I can give. And it's a hit you won't ever, ever forget. If you want, I can give you a small hit. It's really small, like your manhood, and you'll be too ripped to notice anything out of the ordinary. You bitch. I can't believe you just offered me some of your stuff. What well, the Tartarus is wrong with you? Wrong with me? You need to loosen up and stop being so out of it yourself. The doorbell rang, and Spike had to answer the bloody thing. Probably more of their friends. It wouldn't have been the first time they came over to ask for Twilight. I'll be back. Yes, you do that. Twilight hummed before staring at the light again. The heroine was tearing through her body, and tearing at a new one. And she couldn't find the right words to express her exhilaration, other than giving herself a headache while looking at the light. Her body was solid like titanium. Her arms wanted nothing but to only comfort the light bulb and be its friend. Her drowsy eyes glanced at the door once more and tried to find a reason why there wouldn't be a monster waiting to pounce on her the next day. Twilight's arms no longer glowed with sores that resembled red termite bugs peeking through the skin. Instead, her scabby arms pulsated with infection, slime oozing out. She scratched more and more to rid herself of the infectious disease, but it only came back more fiercely after each scratch. Her forehoof couldn't fight it any longer, and soon blood was streaming out of her wrist. It trickled and melted the fur with its bubbling hot stream. She panicked, and her heart didn't fare any better, pumping faster than her mind could process the whole event. She did the next best thing. Scratch. 
when bugs started crawling through her mane and eating the strands of her hair and dandruff. Just as she was close to mustering the strength to get up, a massive surge of dopamine kicked in to hunker her back into place. She attentively watched the light splutter and flash on and off repeatedly. Her blush soon came back, and she let one final sigh of relief out, now contempt with her new love of life. Oh yes, heroin can be one nasty blessing to any pony. Spike paced himself up towards the stairs leading to the doorway, his breath becoming tighter with each foot over the other. His belly jiggled with a little wavy groove going up and down and sideways around his stomach. 